Hello everyone, thanks for joining me here on the BI Whiskey YouTube channel. Now I'm really excited today to show you this brand new feature released this month, May 2020, uh, and it's a shadow feature. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about this, so I want to get straight into it and see exactly what we can do with it. Now, the way this video is going to go is I'm going to show you exactly how to set it up, how to get it started, show you all the different formatting options there are to it, what the different types of shadows there are, and how you can apply it to your report. I'm then going to apply it to this particular report you can see on scene, which I designed and developed. And make sure you stay right to the end because I'm going to show you a really cool trick on how we can conditionally format that of those shadows as well, just so we can make that user experience that extra special for, for your users. Right, let's get to it. So this is my report that I'm going to be working on. So the report is a risk dashboard, as you can see. So what we did was design and develop this report. From there, I then added in a nice background. So I added a nice abstract background, nothing too much, but just something that adds an extra dimension to that report. Then from there, I added some infographics. We then, you know, infographics are really cool. They do bring, uh, you know, data together. It just gives the extra sort of picture in, in the user's mind. And then from there, we went then a step further and then we said, right, OK, let's add some flow in here. Let's add some barriers in here. Let's add a nice navigation here for the users just to complete that user experience for them. But now, of course, we have shadows. Hey, now I definitely want to see what shadows can do for me here. Uh, and this is the report that I'm going to start with. OK, so first things first, let's see how to switch these on. So I'm going to navigate to any visual. I'm going to go over to my format option scroll down to the bottom and then near the end we've got a shadow option here and we simply turn that on I'll go to another visual and I'll switch that on I'll go to this line chart over here I'll scroll down to my shadow and switch it on I'll go to this visual here and I'll switch that shadow on finally I'll go to this one over here and I'll switch that shadow on okay so thanks for joining me see you in the next video no, I'm a model joking, don't go anywhere. So, that, so now we've simply switched it on. But that's how that's how easy it is to, to get started with shadows. Now, as you can see, already it's already started bringing all these visuals out, out to the user and out to uh, out of the screen almost and giving you that sort of bricked effect um, that you can see there. Now, this particular report that I'm working on, I'm working with, um, I don't believe it works very well with it. Now this will work with other reports as long as they are designed uh, properly and effectively. But in this instance, what we're going to do is try to make these shadows work by playing around with the different options. So the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at what other options there is. I'm going to go back down to this one and open up my shadow option here. So the first thing I've got is the ability to change color for the shadow. So that can quite simply be done by clicking on the color themes and choosing a different color. So we can choose a red, for example, and have a nice shaded red background yeah so let's go back and change it to black now we can have the position we can have it inside or outside so we can do that inside or outside and then we can also preset it to a different place so we can say okay well I want it to show on the top right rather than the bottom right I want it to show on the top left uh, and just show so it gives you that different different view of the data now generally if you're going to sh uh, select different um, preset value then apply the same preset to all the other reports as well all the other visuals as well just so that that light is coming from the same direction if we go back over here and let's go back into the shadow option we have also got a custom option down here now the custom option starts where you left off so let's say for example you start with the bottom right and you can see there's a shadow on the bottom right and then if we change to custom we can then apply custom fill custom values to this so for example we've got our size here we can increase our size and you can see it increases the, the size of the shadow around the visual we can then blur the shadow as well by just using that so as you can see it just sort of blurs out and as it get closer it gets darker and then there's an angle so this is the angle that that plays with all the presets so as you can see as we move it along the shadow is just sort of moving around the visual which again if you set the angle at a certain 
uh, number, set the same angle to all the other visuals as well, just to give that good user experience uh, to users. Then you've got the distance, so if you increase the distance, that distance just moves that shadow away, just gives that more of a feeling that it's closer to you, it's, it's, it's ahead of uh, everything else and it's on top of everything else um, and flying away <laughs> like like uh, um, in midair. Uh, so again, you know, when you're designing your reports, just think about that that visual effect uh, that it's giving there. Okay, so I'm just going to move that back, and then again, the final one, you've got your transparency. So if you move it to close to zero, you obviously gets a bit darker. As you get further away, you get a lighter effect for that particular shadow. Okay. So that is the sort of main overview of that. Now I'm going to go over to my final report that I've created here because this is the one that I've published to uh, the service. Now I want to apply the shadows here without causing too much uh, distraction, I guess. So let's go ahead and switch all these shadows on for these visuals. So again, if you've got the May 2020 update, these should be generally available to you. If you don't see the shadow option, uh, then I suggest just double checking the version that you're currently on. Um, you may have to download um, the single installer if that's the way you're doing it, but generally it should update automatically. Okay, so now I've applied the shadow, the basic shadow filters. Now, this particular design of the report, it doesn't really work. I don't feel like it, it really works. It almost looks bricky and, and, and things are out of place and it doesn't really give the effects that I want to 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 for my users to sort of have uh, in this report. So I'm going to change the effect of these to make it a bit more subtle uh, so that when users do use the report it's, it's a better experience or visually it's a better visual experience for them. So I'm going to go down to my shadow. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to inside. Okay so once I've switched that to inside I'm going to change the color of this to like a lighter grey. So almost, you can see the, the shadow there, but it doesn't detract from the actual visual itself. Again, inside, change that, and go inside, and I'm going to change the colour of this one as well. Now, the other way you can do it is that you can add the transparency, so you can edit the transparency like we showed you in the custom, but this way is a, it's a quick way to uh, apply the color change to each of these visuals without having to go into those custom options for that shadow. Okay. Now, looking at that report now, you can see it's giving you a, a slight effect, a slight shadow effect now, which I think is a lot better than it was before. Now, before it was sharp, you know, there was those big changes, uh, you know, it was almost like bricks were coming out of you, but now there's, there's more of a subtle effect just to sort of see, um, you know, it almost sort of merges into the background now. And as you can see in each of these bottom of these uh, visuals, it's just giving you an outline just to say, well, this is where I end, this is where I finish, um, and this is the end of the sort of visual, uh, which I think looks a lot better and a lot cleaner, mm -hmm. um, which is probably the, the sort of effect that I would uh, apply to this particular report. So, so make sure when you are using... Uh, the shadows, make sure you think about the user experience because they are the guys that you are developing these reports for. Uh, you want them to have a seamless experience, you don't want it to be blocky, you don't want it to detract from the actual information that's on the page, you want it just to be incorporated with that report without taking any uh, focus away from the information. Okay, so I said I was going to go through uh, and show you a, a cool trick, so check this out. Now, just to enhance that experience uh, for the user, what we can do is apply some uh, functions or apply some rules to the background of this. So if I go over to this shadow and I say, I want to click on this formatting button here. And based on the rules here, I'm going to select the number of home safety checks and I'm going to give this a rule. So I'm going to say if the home safety checks is between 0 and 2000, I want you to show me red. If it's between 2000 and 5000, I want you to show me yellow. And if it's between 5000 and 100,000, 
then going to show me green. Simply enough, right? Let's click OK. Let's give it a second. And now, as you can see, the current value of home safety checks is 33,000, which is over 5,000. I can see a nice green background. Now, if I select this 1,000 value here on this particular visual, you'll see it now dynamically changes to red. Now, this is a really good way, an effective way to to take the focus from your for your user to that particular visual. Now, if they focus in and click in and slice in uh, different parts of the report, but then suddenly that KPI, that value that they focusing on drops in a particular visual then you can highlight that visual with these with these shadows and this is a great way to do it so as soon as I click off that into another one so if I say let's click this value here now that's changed to, to yellow okay and maybe I don't need to focus on that but let's click on this 25 changed it to green ah great so that's how you can effectively change um, you know the values that are there and change the shadows and make that user experience you know a lot better and you can apply different rules to different visuals. So if I go over to this particular visual over here, what I'm going to do is apply some more rules. I'm going to go back into here. Actually, I'm going to do it on a rule. And then I'm going to say if it's between 0 and 2000, give it a color. 2000 and 5000, give it another color. 5,000 and 100,000, another colour. So this time instead of being red, I'm going to give this colour green. This one I'm going to keep as red. And then this one I'm going to change to yellow. So just swap the colours around a bit just to give you an idea of what, what we can do with that. So now when I apply that, you see that the first colour that applies to it is the yellow. And if I click this value here, this one changes to red, this one changes to green. So then the focus for the user is then changed from one report to the other. So they don't need to focus on that because, yes, we're good over there, but this one that's showing red, we need to focus on that. We need to drill into that. We need to drill through that and see exactly what's going on and why that value is, is low in that particular visual. And again, if we click around another area, we can then see, okay, that's all right over there. We're okay with that. But then if we click on here, aha, uh -huh, okay, that one's red now. So now we can then focus on that and the user's focus is moved over there. So that's a really cool trick that you can use with uh, the shadows, conditional formatting, and apply some really cool uh, aesthetics to your uh, visuals. There are other visuals that you can apply shadows to as well. So this navigation menu at the top here, I can go up here and I can switch on the shadow for each of these as well, just to give it that added dimension. Okay, and I've got these images here, which are little infographics. They've got the shadow option as well. Now, if we go over to the title, that's got a shadow option as well. So you can really go to town with the shadows if you, if you really wanted to. But as I've mentioned before, you know, just be wary of the user experience and the visual aesthetics uh, and make sure they, uh, they work all uh, all the way around. Okay, so thank you for joining me on this video. I'll be covering some of the other features in subsequent videos. If you'd like to receive notifications for those, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, please like and comment. I do reply to a lot of the comments, so if you've got any questions or queries, please hit them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.